All right, this is going to be a quick uh, overhaul maintenance on a Daytona gun ACR. In case you had it installed by Tony, and you're not quite sure how to take it, kind of, you know, basic rundown, how to take it apart and clean it. Uh, this gun's never had a full disassembly since I broke the gun in. It does take, you know, I, I get a cleaning every time I'm done with the field use of it, but I've never taken it down to this where I'm about to show you in here, so this is going to be a full clean down. It's got about 30,000 rounds in it. The gun still functions fine. I probably wouldn't recommend taking it apart unless your gun's kind of acting funny, and mine's acting fine, but I figure why not use a very good cleaning here. So... Start by popping out the upper receiver rear pin. On mine comes out relatively easy. And you're gonna pop the front. Front pin on the lower. Now when you pop it, the lower and upper are gonna kinda of separate. It's just from the it's just from the uh, spring guide. See so it kind of kick back a little bit. So you're gonna take the lower and kind of pop it up a little bit so you can slide it past the feed tube. You drop back down. Now your bolt assembly may or may not stick. As you can see, mine's kind of sticking. There they are, they're separated. I'm going to take the whole uh, bolt carrier assembly out. I'm going to put the upper away for a little bit. All right, first let's start with this. Uh, yours probably will not have this little brass piece. This is something that I added on there. Just to ignore that, you're going to have a solid spring. But if you look on the front, the spring, it's got a little uh, indentation. You kind of just twist the spring, push forward, twist the spring guide, and it'll slide out. So put that aside for now. There's going to be a little Allen screw here at the top. That's going to separate the bolt tank from the actual bolt carrier itself. You got it from Tony or you installed it as he recommends. Do not install it with any Loctite. So yours should come out relatively easy. Put that aside and the bolt tank is going to slide forward out of the bolt carrier. I recommend, I don't paper towels, tissues, shirt, whatever you want. Kind of just do a full wipe down. Mine's actually relatively clean. Uh, but still, I like to just wipe any of the excess junk off of any of the excess dirty lube on it. And once that's there, kind of shake it forward and the actual plunger will come out. I'm going to do the same thing. Yours may be a little dirtier than mine. I kind of tried to run mine last time until it got most of the excess lube out. I figured it would be a little easier to clean when there was much dirtiness in it. Let's go clean the inside out too. There's no gunk there. Alrighty, put that aside. Now there's going to be four screws here, which is holding the airlock, the air shaft collar on here, so you notice it can't come forward. Inside there's going to be a Delrin crush ring, and there's going to be a spring in there. Well, you have to take a heat gun. Should have red Loctite on it. When you installed it, you should have put red Loctite in, or if it got installed from Tony, it should have red Loctite on it. It's not going to take long to heat up. Hopefully, it's a cheap Harbor Freight heat gun, but just kind of go at it for 30 seconds, maybe. Doesn't take much. Just kind of spinning it around to get even heat distribution on it. Might not be the best rotator in the world here, but you get the idea. All right. Now your screws should come out fairly easy. Be careful when you touch it because it's going to be a little warm. There you go. Red Loctite doesn't take much. Set those aside. Now, depending on, let's just say, if some of the Red Loctite kind of drip down past the uh, screws, it might kind of fuse the uh, airlock collar to the shaft a little bit, so you might have to just tap on it a little bit. Let's see where mine sits. Really smell it. it. Smells great. Take a mallet, maybe, or your hand. Just take a little mallet to ours. Kind of hold it firmly. Just kind of give it. There you go. Mine came out fairly easy. All right, cool. So there's what the assembly looks like taken apart. So same thing. I'm just going to kind of wipe it down. Maybe inspect anything for any damage. Again, this gets on 1,000. Really does a real good. Nice coating on everything. Everything feels real nice and slick and lubricated. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see closely, but uh, my Delrin crush ring looks looks fine. So does the spring. Everything looks pretty intact. All right. Again, I'm just kind of throwing some paper towels here. I just kind of get any little excess or anything. Put all that aside. Take some more and get real good inside of here. This is kind of hard to clean. Especially when you don't have uh when you have the air shaft installed, it's kind of hard to just really get in there. 
to be honest, mine's not coming out very dirty, which is a plus. Alright, so this is nice and dry. Put that aside. Do the same thing to the bolt. This is real basic, guys. Everyone complains that the uh, maintenance on these things is a hassle. I mean, this is the most maintenance I've done to this thing yet. If this is a hassle, then don't buy one. I don't know what you want from me. There you go. I mean, it's got some dirt on it. So that was definitely, definitely had some grit. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera, but it's pretty clean now. All right, so we'll put that aside. Now, during a normal cleaning, I really honestly just kind of wipe everything off up in here, and uh, that's about it. But for this, we'll go a little more in depth. Let's take the rear stock off. I'm pushing this pin right here out. Once it's out, it's gonna the stock is gonna slide up and out. Might require a little bit of, a little bit of some jiggly. There you go. Put the stock off to the side a little bit. This rear aluminum piece is kind of the guide for the, for the spring guide and holds the kind of valve down. That just slides straight up. There you go. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this to pretty much every part that's in this thing. Keep grabbing some paper towels and just wiping it off. You'll see on yours, there will be, if you've never cleaned it, or if you just do a basic little cleaning, there's going to be some dirty lube on it. Just wipe it off. And again, if you feel it, everything's got a nice, real good coat on it. it feels great, actually. Uh, now, I'm going to pull the selectors out. I'm going to, I'm, a normal gun, I probably wouldn't take everything apart, but this trigger box and the ACRs is literally a drop-in, like Tony said. It's very easy. So, there's going to be two screws here on either side of the valve. I don't know if you're able to see those, but you just simply... Unscrew those, and that'll allow you to pull the selectors out. I can grab the right Allen wrench. You're not going to pull them all the way out. You're just going to kind of, let's say, pull three quarters of the way out. And the reason for that is it's holding a piece in there that's holding the indents that make your selectors have nice positive clicks in there. But we need to release that spring tension, so we need to release these screws a little bit now that they're released. I got a pair of pliers or something. If you notice, you won't have any. If you listen, there's no more positive clicking anymore. Grab the one on the right side of the gun. Simply just pull out. Give a little wiggle. Boom, she's done. Put that to the side. And then you're going to do the same for the other side of the gun. Just pull out. Now that one's got your meat and guts in it. That's the majority of the body there. All right. Now, the valve, we can, we're going to take out next. Literally, just pull the valve straight up. Depending on what your setup is, yours will come straight out. Well, got an IGL line. Just want to come straight out. You can use a pair of a little wrench, whatever you want. I've got a snazzy little wrench here. Bite on it. There we go. Just gonna come hold it and turn it with the valve. Put the valve to the side. And your line can come out the bottom now. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna do the same thing. <clears throat> Put the line to the side. There's not much to do to that, but I am going to. Do the same thing for the valve. Give it a wipe down. You're going to have two O-rings on the inside here. I'm going to run this piece here. Make sure when you're running whatever it may be, toilet paper or you know whatever it may be, make sure when you're running through any of these holes that you actually do in fact get it all out and you don't have any reminiscences falling apart. So the paper towels are a little thicker. They don't tend to, to rip nearly as easy. Just one pass. We'll throw another one through there. That first one came out a little dirty. There you go. All right, put that to the side. Now, I was, uh, I'm just gonna drop in this gearbox. Uh, well, 
There you go. I personally uh go beneath the trigger with a flathead, just something you got to push, and just push it right by the trigger, and boom. Your whole gearbox is out. You notice it's a little dirtier here. I kind of just wipe stuff off gently when I would after I'd be done with the match, and I would just reapply some more. So this really hurting much? Not not really, I don't think, but I'm just gonna wipe it all down either way. If you want a video on how to take this apart and how to re-put it together, I'll put a link in the description. There's a guy by the name of Andrew Thomas. He has got a pretty good assembly video on it. So. All right, here we go. So that's all kind of wiped down. The inside, I'm not going to take everything apart on the inside. There's not much there. Most of the lube ends up just running down. Just did a quick there. Just how you take it apart. All right. Let's look inside here. This body's kind of wet too. We'll just kind of clean it off. We know it's going to get right wet again. I'm just trying to get as much as the dirty lube that's possibly in there out. It's like a fresh install, right? Fresh install, it's already broken, ready to go. All right. All right, so now the lower is cleaned out. Put the gear, we're gonna put the trigger box back inside the lower. Make sure you hold these two little little metal brackets here just in so they don't you know, slide out, then you gotta deal with your indents or your detents. Uh, slide the trigger into the trigger hole, pretty self-explanatory. I kinda like to go a little, a little more in the back end and the front end. Once it's kinda there, just give it a, a little bit of a push. Maybe some snapping noises will occur. Make sure it's seated. There you go, you know it's seated because if you look at the uh, selector holes, be pretty much lined up with the with the trigger box that's there. Now I grabbed the longer piece well, that was modified either by you or by Tony that was modified. In case you need to see it, there it is at the video. You can see what I modified on it at least, the cutouts. And just slide it in the selector hole. Might fight you a little bit, just you fighting the, the detents. Finicky, you might fast forward to this part. There you go. So that's in there now. You know it's in there. It's going to be flush with the body. Then you flip over the other side. You're going to see a little groove kind of where the other one's got to slide into. You notice there's a little a little slot cut there on the selector. There's a little slot or an actual ball sticking up in there. Line those two up. And they'll be, they'll be nice. Put it on semi, or put it on safe, sorry. And tighten up those uh, two top screws up here. What that's going to do is push those levers into the spring. The spring's behind the detent. And that's going to push the detent into the little groove that's on your selector, giving you the positive clicks that we all enjoy. Put your selector. Yep. All right, there you go. So now I'm going to take my IGL line and feed that back up through the bottom. Give it a little hole there. He's going to come out. Now, this is what I do at least. I grab my valve again. Grab some blue Loctite. Do not go crazy with it. A little goes a long way. And don't go crazy tightening it on there either. The blue Loctite, or Loctite in general, is going to Take care of that for you. And try not to get any Loctite inside the actual hole. Would it hurt anything? I don't know. But... So there you go. I don't know if you can see. It's just a little bit on that side. I'm going to just simply hold it. And I'm going to just tighten. I'm going to screw the valve onto it. There you go. She's hand tight right there. Take my little handy dandy wrench. Hold it. And I'm just going to give it another little bit of a... Just, just make sure it's just hand tight, nice. The Loctite will set up, and that'll do the job for me. And then I'm gonna seat the valve. I have to pull the sear forward. All right, we're gonna take the uh, little aluminum piece there. It's gonna push down the valve, and the spring guide's gonna go through. There's a little groove here in the back that it's gonna slide into. Should be able to see it, it's right there. You can't miss it. Kinda only goes in one way, so. Go. You need to look. The hole in the back is going to line up with the hole in the valve. 
Now my auto lever is already down. I'm going to push the sear in. I'm going to go to semi first. I'm going to push the sear in. Drop the auto lever. Kind of let it get hooked on the sear. All right, we're good. You want to make sure you put it together right. Semi, or I'm sorry, safe. Trigger doesn't pull. Flip over to semi. You should be able to see the semi lever now is on with the brass. You should be able to see that the auto lever has dropped inside there, and the semi lever is a little higher up. As you pull the trigger, that pulls, that pushes the arm onto the sear. Got some tension here. Doesn't want to just go. If you push down hard though, or roughly a little bit harder, see it releases itself. That semi. Flip over to auto. You notice the auto lever has picked itself back up with the semi lever. Squeeze, and that's pushing. Notice now when you go to hit the brass piece on the semi lever, there's no tension on it. So it works. Mechanically, that functions. All right, I'm gonna take my, my stock. For anyone that was modding them, if you look in the back of my stock, it's not the prettiest thing there. But if you look here, you'll be able to see the mod that I did. If you have your tube, you'll notice what it looks like. Simply slide it back in the groove. Pop the pin in. All right, so your lower's assembled. I'm going to lube this. I'm just not gonna lube it at, the very, at this exact moment. So we're gonna get to that a little bit later. We've got all the dirty lube cleaned off of it. We'll put that aside right there. Let's go back and we'll grab our bolt carrier. We'll grab our, all of our little pieces that we had. I'm going to grab this piece first. Now if you look at the bolt tank here, the air shaft is gonna go in with the air shaft, the hole that's gonna slide into the valve is gonna to come to the rear of the actual, the actual uh, bolt tank. So the spring's gonna go in first. There you go. Now if you look real close here, this is gonna, you should be able to see it. Everyone, I've got some questions, or it seems people ask questions, how do you know where this goes? If you can look here on the air shaft, there's gonna be a little, little channel that's milled out onto the air shaft. You really can't misplace where the collar goes. I mean, I guess you could, but you just didn't, you clearly didn't look at what the air shaft had on it. So I'm gonna simply slide this over it. Now again, I'm not gonna to go to blue Loctite now, I'm gonna to go to red Loctite, okay? Got my four screws. I'm gonna Loctite each one, one by one. And same concept, there's no, don't over torque the screws, there's, there's not really a point. Just get them nice and hand tight on there and you're gonna have the red Loctite on the screw and that's gonna do the job. So make sure this is lined up over the groove there. Let's apply a little bit of some red Loctite. There you go, saw a little drop there. Oh, you notice mine moved. Realign it. Get that one kind of tight. There you go, just, just hand tight. The red Loctite's on there. If you have any ex excess red Loctite coming out on the outside, oops, just wipe it off. There you go. I'm gonna kind of do it like you're tightening the lug nuts on a tire. I'm gonna go across from each other. Apply a little drop. They make different types of Loctite as far as, like this is liquid. They make uh, like a paste kind, you sort of just wipe on there. Might eventually go to one of those because this gets a little, uh, little messy as maybe you can see. Wipe that off and do it to the remaining two. Now, if you want to hand crank these, if you want to go crazy and over torque the crap out of these things on here with the red Loctite, simple heat gun. You see how easy mine came off? Yours probably won't come off that easily. And uh, mine's been on there for at least 30,000 rounds, pumping like a champ, and hasn't moved on me. So I'm going to say whatever I'm doing here obviously works. That off. All right, cool. I'm just gonna do a once over on them all real quick. Just to just go around, just to make sure they're snug now. They all appear to be snug. All right, now, so I wasn't really at the lubing stage, but right now I'm gonna, I'm, we're at the lubing stage now. Okay, so I've been using Get Some 1000, seems to be working just fine. I'm gonna give it just a couple 
three little little squirts in there. Probably gonna over lube this a little bit just for the first time right now, just to kind of get that worked inside there. Um, as far as the plunger goes, I'm going to just put a little little spritz on there, and my hands just rub it all around it, and give it one spritz on the inside. Just get some one thousand stuff. I've already said it, but it'll definitely finds its way around. Push that in there. All right. Now the bolt tank is going to go back inside the actual bolt. So I'm going to put some nice layer on the outside here. And again, just kind of stuffs. It's, you'll feel it. Just kind of rub it all over it. Just nicely coat it. Bolt tank's going to go in the same way it came out. We're just going to come out the opposite. Pull all the way through. And then when you look through the top here, you might be able to see where we took that screw out earlier. Tony does not recommend Loctiting it. I have not Loctited mine, and it's been in this gun, like I said, for 30,000 rounds, and it's never come out, it's never broke. I, I just kind of put it in there hand tight, and it's done its job. There we go. She's nice and tight. There you go, nice and loose. The plunger just fell out. All right. So, spring guide. Really never took this apart. Um, I don't really feel the need to. There's a nice sheen on it. There's really nothing wrong with it. Um, what I will say is, some people have also been losing this pin. You should be able to see it right here by my finger. It's right behind my brass collar. That, when you go to install it, or for some reason yours does not have it on there, it probably wouldn't hurt you to just put a little dab of super glue on one end of it. That way it doesn't come out. Super glue is really easy to clean off. Just put some acetone or alcohol on it, and you can end up punching it through. But uh, that's what I would do. I'm not going to get this part apart. I don't, I don't really see the need at all to do it. Um, I'm just going to put a light little coat on the air shaft. All right. This is going to go in the reverse way here. I'd also recommend, I don't think I did it, but I'd also recommend maybe cleaning out the top there. I'll do it now real quick. I need to clean out where the spring guide went. Let's see how that comes out. As you can see there, it actually is really dirty. So, good call cleaning it out. I'll throw it through one more time. If anything, even if you're not going to clean it, this will kind of show you how this, how the internals of, I guess, this ACR looks. Let's get a little squirt inside there. A little fin here in the back of this chart, on the, on the spring guy is going to go up, not down. It can go in both directions. So you're going to push it to the front. You're going to have to give it a little twist at like a 45. That should come through the groove. Mine sometimes is a little bit of pain in the ass. Just because that brass collar that I put on there sometimes, but there you go. So you come through that 45 twist and she'll stay on there. Alright. Put those to the side for the moment. I am not gonna take apart the whole hop-up assembly here. Um what I will do though is if you look inside here, here's where the actual chamber is, the feed tube and everything. Again, I'll just kind of gently, gently wipe off the excess that's there. This is a pretty good job. There's a lot of moving parts that go over it. Well, not a lot of parts, but it does a pretty good job of getting cleaned off and lubricated pretty well. So I'm just going to wipe that off. The big thing that I would say here to do to this, people complain there's lube sometimes inside there and the patches don't work. The new R-Hop rubber, not new R-Hop rubber, but the new rubber that Tony suggested, uh, I can put in a link below, that responds pretty well to lube, uh, but still doesn't hurt me just cleaning it. So this is you know, nail polish rubber for my wife, 100% pure acetone. I just kind of, this doesn't hurt. I'm just going to feed it right through. This will kind of clean whatever's in the barrel, in the patch, whatever the case may be. I'm just going to get any of the gunk outside of the... The barrel and the nub set up, the nub set up with the patch, yada yada. See the patch came out kind of dirty. Just give it a once over. 
Uh, I do that on just general maintenance terms. All right, so now I'm gonna spread a little bit of lube on the, uh, right around the feed tube and everywhere. You can take the bolt assembly. Now, one thing too that I've noticed when I first started playing with the gun, uh, before I used the R hop or the again the tubing that doesn't really affect by lube, by lube too much. Every time I put the gun in, after I actually do a maintenance clean, I would take a paper towel and I would kind of just wipe the front of the uh, front of the nozzle here, just kind of clean it off so there's no lube on the front of it. And I would I wipe the barrel like I just did a second ago. That way, it just kind of helped no lube getting inside the barrel. It seemed to work really well. Slide this in, slide the bolt assembly up in there. I'm gonna kind of put a light coat on the side of the walls here. Both sides of the walls. Push the bolt forward. Nozzle inside the tube. There you go, that's assembled. For the lower, I pretty much do this every time when I'm done playing. Does the lower take a lot of beating? Not too much, but I mean, it does take a beating to some extent. So, take my get some. I like to really spray where the semi lever or any of the levers actually contact the sear, just so it, it doesn't round it out as fast. Give it a little squirt inside of the. Uh, the actual valve, a little bit on top where the spring guide's gonna go, and I kind of just give it once over inside the trigger box. It's probably a little excessive, it will leak a little bit, but once it, your first day of it leaking, I just let that kind of just rest it where it's at. Now when you go to put it back together, you're gonna have to make sure the air shaft here gets inside the hole inside the valve. Air shaft, valve, air shaft, valve. Uh, it's not a really a, a hard thing to do, but I've noticed some people, I guess, don't have the same thing that I do, but mine works just fine. Sort of slide together. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. But inside there, my air shaft is like, I don't know, eighth of an inch sitting below the valve. I just take a flathead. I kind of just push it just a tad up, and it's aligned. And once it's aligned, push it forward, but make sure, you, again, you have to lift up the lower receiver just a tad to go over the feed tube. And I'll sit right back down, push forward, I lock the front pin, I take the rear pin, push it in. It's pretty much all the way through. There you go. You got a little bit of lube coming out because I kind of sprayed a lot just for a, you know, a brand new overhaul. You want to call it? Wipe down the excess. Say, so take the take the charging handle, rack it a couple times. Now we didn't really lube too much on the outside of the bolt, so maybe just give it one one little spritz there. Now I'm just gonna do a quick little wipe off. Trust me, this stuff is gonna find itself everywhere. As much lube as I just put on it, it's gonna it'll probably be seeping out of the body for a little bit, and then yeah, it is what it is. I don't run it that wet normally, but this is just a complete overhaul. And uh, yeah, again, get some 1000 is a fantastic lube. It's going to go all throughout the gun. It definitely will find its way everywhere. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, you have a good day. Goodbye, Daytona gun.